Why do I use a headset microphone? I make most of my videos in a noisy environment. My test equipment and most of my computers have noisy fans. There's unpredictable street noise here. And I have poor insulation in my lab, which is my garage. My solution to make my voice louder than the other sounds is by putting the microphone closer to my mouth. I move a bit, quite a bit while working on equipment, so a fixed mic is, isn't going to work. And lavalier microphone placement, at least typical placement, is not close enough and picks up too much mo noise from the equipment fans. So for me, a headset microphone is the best solution. So this is what I've been using for the past four and a half years. Um, it, I'd probably buy a wireless go system now or something else, but at the time, this is the best solution. So, uh, this is the, uh, road filmmaker and they sell this, uh, this, uh, wire uh, frame that you can add to the lavalier mic to make it into a headset. The lavalier mic, like all their lavalier mics is omnidirectional and picks up sounds equally from all directions. The unfortunate part is this headset is very uncomfortable, it's unadjustable, and it just doesn't stay in place on my head. So I've been looking around and I saw this Shure microphone. The 49 price seems good. It's cardioid, so it will preferentially pick up sounds from my mouth and not the equipment and fans. It's an electric condenser mic, which is the same type of microphone as the Rode lavalier mics. And, uh, but it uses a proprietary connector, so it only works with the Shure system. So I wanted to see if I could adapt it. So let's start by looking at the Rode system. And the Rode system, uh, this is, uh, is from another video I did, but let's just look at this input section. The microphone itself has the, uh, the electric capsule driving a JFET and then the drain of the JFET goes to the tip and the uh, 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 source of the JFET and the uh, other side of the uh, microphone capsule goes to the uh, shaft and this is the source and if you don't know on a connector this is called the tip ring and shaft on a trs connector and so the ring on the road film my road filmmaker is unused and just these two connections get used so it's really all this it, the rest of this we can ignore and just look at this input circuit so ideally we want to make the uh sure microphone look like the road microphone so if we look here, this is a, a uh, some stuff I found on the UR1M Sure transmitter, and it shows here, here's the drain, the source of the FET, and here's the microphone return, and it's separate, and the, there's the four pins here. If you take the cable apart, this lead is red, uh, this lead is black, and this is the shield. If we look over here at the connector, the shield, which is pin one, is also connected to the uh, the connector shield on the outside itself. So now uh, what I'm going to do is hook it up to a uh, a uh, 35 millimeter or 3.5 millimeter phone plug that fits in the uh, road uh, transmitter, and uh, I'm using a a tip shaft or a, just a simple one mostly because i had that one in stock and it's shielded but you can also use a tip ring shaft one or a trs and leave the ring uh disconnected now i would highly recommend using one of these switchcraft uh, connectors i recommend because you can get a cheaper one and make it work, but they're going to fail on you at an inconvenient time. And if you're putting all your time and effort into producing a video, you don't want the sound to crap out. Just buy the Switchcraft. You'll be happier in the long run. Anyway, so here's the, uh, the Shure uh, 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 microphone up here. Here's the red and black and the shield leads. I come back here and at the connector I hook the red lead to the tip and the shield and the black lead to the shaft. 
So now this is the actual connector. This is the sure connector and it comes with this very nice rubber strain relief. So when you take this apart, save this rubber strain relief. We're going to use it later. It's really nice. Now, before you start soldering this thing together, make sure you put all these parts on the cable. This first, this second, or you can slide them together like this and slide it down. And then third goes this uh, plastic shield that comes with the, uh, the uh, connector. And really make sure you do that before you're soldering, because if you do a really nice solder job and then you find that you forgot to put one of these pieces on, you're going to feel really, really dumb. Not that I know anything about that. So let's start after. So, so here we, we're going to, we've cut off the connector. And now we're going to strip it back. And I stripped off a lot more, uh, of this sheet, soft rubber sheath than I really needed to. And that's because I wanted to try out some stripping on this wire that I've never used before. And when you stripped it, what for stripping this, I used this, the 16 gauge or 1.3 millimeter opening on a pair of wire strippers. Now we want to unwind the shield layer. Then the shield's actually uh, wrapped in two layers. One's clockwise, one's counterclockwise. So you unwrap one and the other one's there. And then you unwrap the second one and combine them. And now you're left with these two strings. So you see these two strings here. You cut them all the way back to where the shield is. I use flush cutters. And now we need to strip this black wire back and again, back all the way here to where we cut it. Now for this, I use a thermal stripper and I'd recommend using a thermal stripper of some type. This is the one I use, this uh, Maasai Corporation one, but uh, uh, Akko makes a very nice thermal stripper. And if you do get yourself a thermal stripper, make sure you get one with adjustable temperature. And I actually had to go to the high setting here to get a clean strip on these. So these inner wires actually stripped at a lot hotter temperature than I thought they would, which is why I gave myself some tryout space. Anyway, so after you strip that black wire back, you combine that with the shield, and then you stick all three of those through the hole in the shaft connection on the uh, Switchcraft connector over here. Now that that's there, that's stuck through, you you wrap this, wrap these uh, 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 tangs around uh, with some long nose pliers and crimp them down to hold the wire in place before you solder it. Now um, I solder the uh, those uh, uh, the the uh, shield and the black wire to the uh, shaft connection. Well, I pl put the soldering iron on the outside and applied the solder from the, the side we don't see here on the inside. And then you want to flush cut this uh, uh, off on this connect uh, to the, uh, this, uh, the shaft connection. Now here's the, the red wire, the drain wire. So I'm going to cut it here with uh, just a pair of cutters. Then I'm going to use the thermal strippers and, and strip it right here. Now you can see where it's cut and stripped. And now I stick it through this hole and then I solder it. And each time I solder, I apply a drop of uh, RA, RMA flux. And then once it, this is soldering is done, I clean this all up with isopropyl alcohol. And so you can see here, here it's all cleaned up with the isopropyl alcohol. You can see the flux is, is gone. Then we uh, slide this plastic sheath down. This comes with the connector. And then we slide the, uh, the uh, outer sh shield and the, the, uh, a strain relief down and screw the connector together and we're done. So now we plug it into the uh, Rode uh, Filmmaker transmitter and this is it plugged in and when we do that I measure 3.95 volts here. Uh, that's a little higher than you get with a Rode uh, caps, uh, capsule but it's fine. 
it's a little high. I think uh, Sure uses a little bit bigger resistor up here when they use this configuration, but this still works. I'm talking with you, to you on it now with the with this microphone. Anyway, so here's me wearing the headset, and it turns out it's much more comfortable than the Rode headset, and it works well with my glasses, too, which was another plus. So this conversion should work good with any Rode wireless system that's compatible with their lavalier mics. Basically, the Filmmaker, which I use, or any of the, wi the wireless Pro, Go, or B systems that they now make. It should also work with any Shure Electrat condenser microphone that uses the TA4F connector. So all these models of lavalier mics, headset mics, or even their horn instrument mic equipped with this connector should work. Now, I've only verified that this works with this particular microphone and my Rode Filmmaker system, but it should work with these others. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd want to hear more from me or my other videos, please subscribe and select the all uh, option when you subscribe so you get a notice when I uh, post a new video. Anyway, thank you for listening.